What's poppin' everybody? This is Sig Rule 4. With Unbroken Bonds, our latest set coming in a few weeks, now, the time has come once again to discuss the Pokemon TCG meta and see in what direction this new set is going to take us. Uh, team Up, our latest set right now, our ninth set, definitely made one hell of an impact, almost in 180 in what happened to the TCG meta. When Lost Thunder got released, people really didn't gravitate towards Zero Aura GX and the Lightning Pokemon as I thought they would have and they should have. But with Zekrom, Zekrom and Pikachu GX being released, uh, having Pokemon like Zapdos too, and then a bunch of good Lightning support also released in Team Up, it seems like Lightning Pokemon have become the strongest, the most popular. But not only that Pokemon, Tag Team GX Pokemon in general have taken over ever since they got released. In a way that went black and white, the first batch of EXs got released in black and white, Next Destinies, then Dark Explorers, and they kind of taken over these giant Pokemon with the highest HP. It's basically the same thing happening with the Tag Team GX Pokemon, I would say so, from Waylord. I've been using Gengar and Expanded, really been enjoying it. Snorlax has been seeing a lot of play with Kiawe and all the other flexible ways you can power up that Pokemon. I've seen people trying to use the Battle Mazan chicks, all those supporters, trying to use them together, get a bunch of energies instantly on these big Tag Team GX Pokemon like Snorlax or Waylord, and then go from there. And in general, you know, all decks. Most of the best decks are based around these Tag Team GX Pokemon from Venusaur 2. Trying to tank with that big grass guy, all of the grass healing support. Taking advantage of the Life Prism Stadium, taking advantage of Shamans. Many different methods to play with these Tag, tag Team GXs. And the trend is going to continue with the next set, I would say. The new Tag Team GXs are going to bring their own piece of brokenness in the mix. But besides the Tab Team GXs, with uh, Sun and Moon with Team Up basically being our ninth set, uh, by now the sort of uh, the Sun and Moon meta game is kind of being almost established for the most part. You see all the variety of decks, of good decks that are played. I've seen the results in the regionals, in Pokestats, the the recent ones. I don't remember what place was, but. You see all these Zekrom GX decks, of course. You see Fighting, you see Zorark. You even see Blaze Falon doing kind of well there, having a bunch of spots. Uh, you see all these sort of different decks. And there's actually, there is a variety, a good variety right now of good, you know, strong tier decks that you can try and use and do well with. Uh, Zekrom, of course, I would say, Lightning Pokemon still have the best of the best support. But there's a lot of different combinations, a lot of different decks that can actually perform very well. You know, Quasi GX, all the other energy acceleration decks, your Malamar, your Nakanatal variants. Uh, we had quite a few cards being banned too, like more cards being banned than usual. Uh, we had the banning of Maxi and the Unknown because of the broke the broke combos that could be done. They didn't ban Archie yet, which which isn't fair in my opinion, but anyway, that's a different video. And we even saw Lusamin and the Delinquent Band out of the blue because of the Troll decks in Expanded and even Standard. Now, these sort of uh, Hoopa, Regigigas Troll decks and these sort of run you out of resources, not really attack Troll decks are still around and are going to be around. And that's another part that's kind of one of the more annoying things of the meta, both the Expanded and the Standard one. But yeah, for the most part, uh, Lightning Pokemon really just doing very, very well, changing shit up big time. And just a good variety of different decks, uh, really solid decks that you can try and pilot and see some success. Now, Unbroken Bonds is going to be our next set coming in a few weeks. From my understanding, the way I realize it, at least, this, this set is basically going to combine the Full Metal Wall set in Japan and the Double Blaze set in Japan. Unbroken Bonds. So it has this sort of a, a complementary type focus, fire and metal, like some sort of forgery blacksmith shit. You know, you got fire and metal being the most important aspects. And it's basically going to be reflected in this set with some of the best Pokemon being fire and metal. Now, a lot of a lot of Tag Team GX Pokemon with a lot of potential. We got Feramasa and Buzzle GX. This is a big Tag Team GX Grass Pokemon, so you can try and do similar things as you would with 
the Venusaur GX. The only difference is that this guy is actually a cheap hard hitter too. And with Elegant Soul, it can actually do some really high damage without any strings attached. Like uh, Venusaur, just being able to just do, you know, it's good GX attack once and then being stuck to 150 and shit. Uh, so that Pokemon might be something, big grass GX Pokemon people can look into. Then you got Mershado and Machamp GX, a big fighting Pokemon that can do some good shit too. You know, having a strong fighting revenge attack, just strong attacks in general. And being fighting, it means it can take advantage of Deancey. So you have that shit you can look into. And then you got things like uh, Greninja and Zoroark GX for Darkness. This is basically like the new strong Darkrai X from Breakpoint. Gets more powerful the more darkness energy you have in play. And with Sharpedo being released in this set as well. You know, these sort of Dark Turbo decks might see a comeback even in Standard. Uh, I would imagine this Pokemon is going to replace Darkrai X in Expanded. And we'll have to wait and see if he's going to be very good in Standard too. What makes me feel kind of skeptical about these different types of Pokemon, like let's say Greninja and Zorak GX, is that, you know, by the time you, you start getting, trying to get all these Darkness Energies into play and try and boost your damage, do very high damage with that Pokemon, it makes you think, why not just go ahead and do all that energy acceleration in a Lightning Zekrom GX deck? Well, that Pokemon really has a broken GX attack and really can just put that damage up put instantly. Like snipe for 170 on the bench and then do 200 in the active position. You know, you got the, the electro powers as well. You're going to get those knockouts, of course. So, I don't know. It just seems like instead of going through the effort of trying to power up a Pokemon like Greninja and Zorak GX, perhaps maybe sticking to Zekrom is the way to go. But it's definitely one of the more promising Pokemon, getting those Darkness Energies out and doing a lot of damage with Dark Pulse. You know, Greninja and Zorak, it definitely combines two of the more broken Pokemon in recent years. So, it might be a good contender that's going to be a very good deck. We also have Gardevoir and Sylveon GX in this set, which is another very good GX Pokemon. This one, this one is very tricky. It might end up being just mediocre, or it might end up being very, very broken. With Fairy Song, being able to instantly search two Fairy Energies, just at the start of when you can attack, really, with Fairy Song, it's mass energy acceleration for Fairies. really can just go well with the Gardevoir GX, the regular one, Stage 2, and just bring some good power to Fairies with, all, with such a good energy acceleration attack. Pretty much the same as how the Xerneas used to be in X and Y. You know, Kaledia Storm is a strong attack too. Doing 150 and then you can conserve the energies. So another good GX Pokemon that might have potential. All of these GX Pokemon really bring their own sort of broken thing in the mix. Their own piece in the metagame. Now the ones that I think have the biggest potential, it's just kind of obvious uh, from this set being, you know, the Fire and Metal set very dangerous is Lucario and Melmel GX. Now this guy, he doesn't seem like all that much, but he's a tank Pokemon and the power of these metal Pokemon get from this set is really dangerous. It almost gonna be, it almost seems like it's gonna be impossible to really do any damage to these guys once they get their defensive combos going. With full metal wall GX, Blocking 30 damage in the entirety of the game to all of your metal Pokemon. You can't play this around with things like Guzma. You can't play this around with anything. It's just going to be fixed, you know, 30 less damage. All the other methods to block damage on metal Pokemon. I feel like Pokemon like Staccatica, Pokemon like Scissor GX, uh, Staccatica GX from Celestial Storm, they might start being more reliable now when combined with, you know, all the new metal support in this set. And Metal Pokemon just might give these Lightning Pokemon a run for their money. It might just be something really, really huge here. Because there's always these sort of defensive tactics of block and damage. But they're never really implemented that well. People always find ways to play around them. But they really just went out of their way in this set to make that strategy really, really strong. Just a lot of different Pokemon. A lot of different tools. The frying pan. Just a lot of ways to make these Metal Pokemon really truly effective tanks that just won't die now of course to counter them you got these fire pokemon there's a lot of very good fire support here fire decks 
getting some speed, getting some good cards they can work with, like the Salazzle that lets you draw cards. Basically the same effect as Ninetales from Heart Gold Soul Silver. That Pokemon is definitely going to see playing fire decks in any deck really just that can utilize fire energies. Getting that good draw power in the form of an ability and a Pokemon is something we haven't had so much here. We had the Zipstrika, but there's not a lot of decks. Not many decks can utilize that Pokemon effectively. Now we got good things like Pidgeotto. Of course, there's always Zorok GX around another Pokemon, but that good sort of a solid draw, discard energy and draw three effect, you know, is really good. Of course, they do have the previous support where you can add the far energies with the Fire Flint from Dragon Majesty. Uh, you got Flame Crystal, that's the one, the new one. You can put a lot of fire energies from your discard pile into your hand. So, you know, the whole thing with fire Pokemon, where they discard energies and they have really big attacks, also gets an emphasis here. They might be really strong Pokemon, too. Now, I think the biggest impact is going to be through a special energy in this set, the Triple Acceleration Energy. This is basically a card that was never seen before outside of the original EX era. So it's kind of a... Uh, it makes sense for them to bring a card like this back in this era, since they've recycled so many things from the EX era by now, in the Sun and Moon period here. And this card is definitely broken. DC is always a very iconic card, a very significant card in the metagame at any time it's around. Triple Energy is basically what it says, a triple DC, basically. And it's really, it's really going to be good. I feel like many different Pokemon are going to be seen in a new light here. Things like Nidoqueen, a deck that I've been really enjoying here, is going to be pretty good with the use of this card. And just many different Pokemon. Slacking, I can't wait to use Slacking with Triple Energy, with Triple Acceleration Energy. And many, many, many different Pokemon will be able to exploit it. It might be the biggest card from this set. Like if I have to pick one card... You know, this triple acceleration energy is definitely it. Now, we have other very good significant support here in when it comes to trainers. You got Green's Search or Blue's Search, however you want to call it. For decks that don't want to run Pokemon with abilities, they'll finally be able to get some good consistency with this card. You being able to instantly add two cards from your deck when you use this. Good trainers in general here. You got the red... Uh, red guy too, the red's challenge, yeah. Basically, computer search. It might not be as efficient since it's a supporter. The beauty of the original computer search was that it was only a trainer. You can play that card and play a supporter. So you can instantly search out a Guzma, instantly search out a supporter. Really great. But, I mean, red's challenge is definitely going to be another card that's going to see play here. Uh, even if it's not going to be on the level of computer search, it's definitely going to be very useful. Welder, now that I think about it, yeah, another very good supporter for fire Pokemon. Being able to attach fire energies from your hand to one of your Pokemon and draw three cards really just gives them a lot of power. And definitely the Tag Team GX, Reshiram and Charizard in here, is not to be fucked with either. Very good HP, 270, doing a lot of damage with all the fire support it's going to have at its disposal. You know, we'll see if it becomes on the level of Pikachu and Zekrom GX, since it's Reshiram and Charizard. It's definitely good, though. Fire and Metal support is going to be top-notch from this set. For me, personally, I'm really happy that Honchkrow GX is going to come out in this set. One of my favorite Pokemon, getting a good GX. Uh, it does have a very good locking ability that might end up being very potent. As long as it's active, your opponent can't play tool cards, special energies, or stadium cards. So, it might be... A Pokemon that's going to block, be effective to block the triple energy, block the old DCs, and block any special energies. All these Prism Stadiums, it's going to be able to block them too. And just any tool cards. You know, all of those escape wars on Jirachis and other Pokemon. So it might be an effective little anti-meta deck too. You also have the Persian 2, Persian GX. And, you know, once again, you know, the Pokemon company, they make sure when they release a new set for the most part, to bring something significant and different from the previous sets, kind of top the previous set. Uh, from the Duskstone uh, trainer card that can help out Honchkrow and help out Aegislash and the other Pokemon that evolved from this. 
can be good. Chandelure might be seen in a new light thanks to this card. And just some very good stage 2 Pokemon as well. From the Porygon Z being that energy acceleration Pokemon for any special energies. Then you've got cool things like the Gengar and Poliwrath that I really like as stage 2 Pokemon in here. Many different types of Pokemon once again. Incineroar is another card that might be something for fire Pokemon, boosting the damage. And you also have Volcanion, which is going to be a very good energy acceleration for fire Pokemon in its own right. Just like most of the sets where they have a sort of type, archetype theme, this set is definitely metal and fire. Uh, metal Pokemon are definitely very dangerous, and if they can block the weakness effectively with Fry Pan, like if you can't get rid of the Fry Pans and hit them, hit them for weakness with Fire Pokemon, they're basically going to be really unstoppable tanks. Now with Field Blower around, I, I feel like that card might see more play if these metal Pokemon uh, become more popular. Uh, get rid of those uh, Fry Pans and then the Fire Pokemon can destroy them with weakness. And it's going to be really interesting. I'm really looking forward to many cards in this set. Many cards that can boost a lot of my a lot of the decks that I, I like, but aren't really super great, like Blaziken, the Slacken, as I've mentioned, Nido Queen, Scrobat too, might be very good. So as far as what the meta, meta-wise, what's going to happen, it's basically more Tag Team GX Pokemon bringing their own broken thing into the mix, and people making decks su surrounded on them, based on them, really, focusing on them. We have quite a few, all of them have their own good points. Obviously, uh, Fire and Metal, they're kind of the favorites here, getting most of the support. But all of the other ones have really strong potential, like from Buzzle, Greninja, and Zorok, GX, of course. Of course, as always, you have those good Stage 2 Pokemon, if you want to be like Rogue and try and play with those, like I do. Some good options to try from, namely Polaraph and Gengar, as I'm thinking of. And with Blastoise, too, those Blastoise GX should be coming in here, too. Maybe water is going to see even more variety besides the Waylord Mini Blastoise is going to be able to be used with the team-up Blastoise. These are my thoughts, guys. It's basically the Tag Team GX Pokemon taking over even more. But I feel like there's going to be some good variety. Maybe there's going to be some broken interactions that are going to be kind of unhealthy. Like, uh, I don't know what's going to happen with the Metal Pokemon. Sometimes things might appear very good on paper, but practically they're not as effective. So, only time will tell. But anyways, I think I rambled long enough in this video. If I have to pick, like, I guess the strongest things in this set, strongest archetypes, obviously Metal and Fire are easy things to think of with all the support they're getting. Uh, maybe Honchkrow is going to be an effective lock Pokemon too. Maybe Darkness, Darkness and Fairies are going to be really broken again with Zorok, GX, Greninja, and Gardevoir, Sylveon. You would never know. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys subscribe, leave a like, and share this with your friends. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you guys for watching. Save Rule 4. We'll see.